Hello and welcome everyone to a 3D tutor video in which we're going to talk about handguns. During the modeling phase, you might have encountered a face that gives off artifacts. Or maybe you've heard of the word handgun before being tossed around on the internet of people saying how it's never a good idea to use them. Well, in this video, I will give you a proper explanation of what it is, whether or not we can make use out of them, and most importantly, if we're having an issue with them, what we can do to solve it. But before we get into the topic, make sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel for more amazing content. We are currently working on an Egyptian themed 3D modular pack, which we are releasing in parts. Currently, we have the prop selection part out, and I'll make sure to have a Gumroad link attached in the description down below. So yeah, make sure to check that out. And now back to the topic. So, what is an end gun? In 3D modeling, an end gun is a polygon with an n number sides of vertices. Unlike a triangle which has 3 vertices, 3 edges, or a quad face which has 4, both having a fixed number of sides, an end gun can have any number of sides greater than that amount. End guns can be used in 3D modeling to create complex shapes and surfaces that cannot be achieved with a simple topology. It can also be used to speed up your workflow, but the use of end guns can also lead to modeling errors, such as non-planar faces, which can result in shading artifacts and other issues like optimization issues or texture distortions. Therefore, it is generally recommended to use triangles or quads when possible and avoid using end guns unless it's absolutely necessary. But are the end guns actually useful? End guns can be incredibly useful in 3D modeling for a variety of reasons. Firstly, they speed up the workflow, making it easier to select them compared to the multiple smaller polygons, which can be a time-consuming process if you want to modify them. Additionally, end guns are particularly useful for creating holes in objects since they can be easily created using the Boolean functionality without leaving any of the additional edges. This makes cleaning up the model much easier, thus speeding up the modeling process and making it more efficient. However, as mentioned previously, using such topology can cause artifacts. Therefore, it's crucial to use end guns with care and ensure that the model is still clean and functional. Overall, end guns can be a powerful tool in 3D modeling, particularly when creating complex shapes or surfaces, as they can save time and effort while producing high quality results. Use and don'ts of end guns. So, let's say you decide to make use out of end guns. What do you do? How do you actually make use out of them? Well, for starters, you need to use a program that actually supports endgons. For example, Blender allows you to make use out of endgon faces by simply filling in a hole with more than 4 vertices. And by doing that, you will pretty much get such a face. After you get a set endgon, I recommend you using endgon faces for flat surfaces only, as they are easiest to manage and allow you to have control over the whole modeling process, like selecting edge loops in a much simpler way. Just making them flat though won't give you the right results. If you have a hole inside for example, it might not create an artifact immediately, but let's say you want to move your created project to another program. Chances are that it will almost always create artifacts within that hole. So yeah, avoiding having holes within the insides of endgone surfaces is what I definitely recommend you doing. Endgone mess, how do you fix it? Fixing the endgone faces is generally quite simple. All you gotta do is strangulate that part and it will work just fine. Such technique doesn't cause too much issue for props or other in-game assets. For example, as game engines like Unity and Unreal Engine will automatically convert the topology to triangles anyways. This might cause an issue for animation morphing and weight painting however, if you want to do it for characters or something of the sort, if the topology doesn't have a certain flow for the edge loops. In which case, I recommend you checking out the topology options to make sure that they are set up properly and meshes are able to be animated correctly. One more troublesome situation would be when you are trying to use subdivision to add additional detail to your mesh or smoothen out our entire object. For areas where there are lots of holes, I recommend you using beveling tool to control the flow of the topology or how the mesh needs to cave in, as otherwise end guns would definitely give you a bad mesh in regards to those corners. So yeah, that's pretty much it when it comes to the end guns in 3D modeling. But to summarize, an end gun is a polygon with any number of sides greater than 4. End guns can be useful for speeding up workflows and creating complex shapes, but they can also lead to artifacts if not used properly. 
use angon on flat surfaces and avoid having holes within such faces. Lastly, to fix angon issues, triangulate the problematic areas and consider retopology for better topology flow in your animations or also consider making use out of the velvet functionality for more nicer topology flow within the curve. And that's pretty much it. I hope that the video has provided you with better understanding of angons and their role in 3D modeling. Remember to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more amazing content. Don't forget to check out our Egyptian theme 3D module pack on Gumroad. The link is of course going to be in the description down below. And yeah, thank you so much for watching and happy modeling everyone.